Hello everyone buddy and welcome to our quick and dirty introduction to copyright in music brought to you by Tune. In this episode number one we are going to cover copyright in music 101. What they are and who owns them. In the Copyright Act the only copyright that is recognized is copyright. When people talk about master rights, performance rights and such, they are simply referring to a particular manner of exploiting the copyright. But the music industry has developed to see them as separate rights and define them in such a way in their contracts and in their agreements. So always make sure you get a keen eye to check your agreements to understand what your particular rights and obligations are. What follows in these videos is a generalized version of the industry. What is music? Is it a song? Is it words and melodies? An idea? Could be, but what about CDs or MP3s? Some might say it's an experience, impossible to hold or touch, nothing more than a memory as soon as it ends. In reality, it's all of these things and so much more. Whether we like it or not, music's very existence requires a business element. Live performances, streaming, listening to any recording at all, and even free concerts. Money has to change hands for equipment, facilities, electricity, internet, and everything in between. In addition to all of the material costs, there is also the human power. A massive decentralized army of skilled and creative people working as one to ensure the world can enjoy the experience of music. If we want to experience music as we know it, easy to access, global and magical, the human power needs to be paid. Everyone from the workers at a factory that makes speakers, through to an artist arranging notes and putting them to words, to a business person marketing and selling recorded music or concert tickets, it's all part of the music business. At the heart of this business sits the central music industry, which generates revenue from musical notes and sells the experience of music. How do you sell experience though? It's basically selling or licensing the use of the copyright. So what is a copyright? The word copyright literally refers to the right to copy. This implies that the owner of a copyright has a set of rights that allows them to decide what to do with it and how it's to be used. A copyright is an asset, exactly like a car or a house that can be used, rented or sold. Except because it's not physical, we refer to it as an intangible asset. But it's an asset nonetheless. In the music industries, these copyrights are linked to music, melodies and words that are intellectual property and the recording of that intellectual property. So. Whatever form that music takes, whether it's a stadium concert or elevator music, the copyright's existence relies on simply publishing the music in some way. But this could lead to confusion and sometimes even conflict. So the addition of metadata aids in clarifying information about the copyright. Who made it? Who owns it? How it's used or licensed? And how to pay the people involved? So while copyright is an essential to the business of music, the metadata allows the business to happen. The music industry we all talk about consists of actually two music industries who rely and interact with each other, the publishing industry and the recording industry. The publishing industry is made up of publishing companies who are responsible for making music public. Publishing literally means to make public or generally well known. The recording industry is responsible for recording and distributing recorded music and is made up of record companies and record labels. Fun fact, the word label actually comes from the circular labels that are in the center of vinyl discs displaying the rights holders credits and the name of the record label. We'll go into more detail about them in episode 2 but for now what you need to know is that they are technically different industries and that traditionally they trade in different aspects of copyright. Whereas anyone can create and own a copyright, in the context of the music industry, there are usually two stakeholders that are able to own a share or the whole of a copyright. The creative stakeholder and the business stakeholder. These stakeholders, which we'll refer to as rights holders, can be a person or an organization. Between the two of them, they are usually responsible for creating and monetizing the copyright. Each industry usually deals with different forms of copyright that are separate yet related. The publishing industry works with copyrights associated with intellectual property in musical work, such as the melody or the words. These are referred to as publishing rights. 
The recording industry works with copyrights associated with the recorded version of a musical work, known as the sound recordings or the recorded works. These are usually referred to as either master rights or neighboring rights. Both referring to the same rights, the term master comes from the word master tapes or the final version of a recording that will be released. The word neighboring comes from the fact that the rights are next to publishing rights, i.e. their neighbor. We will use the term neighboring rights as that is the term that South Africans tend to use the most. Strictly speaking, the law itself does not distinguish between these types of copyright, but the industry does. We'll deal with it in industry speak, but elaborate more on this in the study guide. A musical work is a song or a piece of music which, as mentioned before, has a copyright associated with it and is protected by that copyright. In South Africa and most countries in the world, as soon as the musical work is created and published, whether the songwriter writes it down or documents it in any way, like a cell phone recording, if it meets the requirements of copyright law, it is automatically copyrighted and the songwriter is usually the owner. A recorded work is a recording of that musical work. When the musical work is recorded, a whole new copyright is created. It is usually owned by the artist who performed on that recording, though it could be owned by whoever paid for the recording to be made, or a label. These are neighboring rights. The term artists refers to people who perform music, either on a recording or in a live performance. Depending on what they do, they can be called either performing artists or recording artists. The rights holders can be either people or organizations, and they can either create the copyright or monetize them from a business point of view. In the publishing industry, the songwriters get credits for each role that they played in writing the work, such as composing, authoring, or adapting. We'll refer to this creative credit as the songwriter's share. The publishing companies acquire a share of the publishing rights by either buying them or having them licensed to them. This business share is referred to as the publisher's share. In the recording industry, the recording artist receives creative credits for each role they played in recording the work, such as artists, featured artists, and non-featured artists. The record label acquires a share of the neighboring rights either by paying for the recordings, buying them, or licensing them. This business share is called the label share. So you might be thinking, this is all good and well, but I can release music without a record label or a publishing industry. Why do I need to know all of this if I can do it all myself? Good point, but that's exactly it. If you are a self-published, self-recorded, self-released artist that writes and performs your own music, you are the songwriter, publisher, artist, and record label all rolled into one. This means that you own all of the copyright associated with your music, and that means you get to keep all of the royalties. And there you have it, folks. Music is a deep and powerful artistic medium, a selection of notes and words that can delight and enthrall. But it is also a complex set of laws, business intricacies, and information that allows the industry to keep running so that the power of music can be accessible to anyone, anytime, anywhere in the world. In episode two, we'll be looking at the publishing and recording companies in more detail to understand what agreements and deals are made of and what rights are being traded. Thanks for watching. We'll tune you later.